This song is called The Perfect Day. Sex two times and a pizza. 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 <laughs> That's such a good TikTok. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning, everyone. It is too early. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence, full of two audios. Double for your good. Double for you. Double for everyone. Oh, I bet it's the camera. Oh, yeah. Turn off the audio from that camera. I don't know how. I got you. I got you, dog. Uh oh. Nah, we're good. Better? No. 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 Not better. <laughs> Two, Two audios, audios no waiting. waiting. No, no audios. Well, actually, just the camera audio, probably. Just a moment. Camera? No. Video um, capture. How about this? That, that should work. work. That, that should, should be it. it. Oh. oh. Woo! 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 Hey! hey. Listen, my, my little pickles. pickles. We, we got, got a brand new. new no. no? Hello? Hello? Still, Still doubled. doubled. No. It didn't, it didn't do it. Oh, oh it's because there's, there's two layers, layers of the camera. camera. Ah, <laughs> you gotta be both. You gotta be both. Where's, Where's the, the other camera? camera? It's, it's called, called camera. camera. Can we just delete that? Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. How about now? How about now? It is a new camera, yes. We got a new camera. No? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Woo. We got a new camera. Listen. Listen, we got a new camera, and what does a responsible production do? Do do they, the day before, say, let's hook up the camera and test it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Do they do they say, hey, we got a brand new toy, but it's real close to showtime. Let's not hook it up until Wednesday. No. No. No, uh, they set it up at 7.50. That's what they do. And look at this beautiful, look at this. Look at this. Autofocus. BBs. We're looking right into your eyes. We're looking right at you. Look at the clarity. So good. Look at the fidelity. He needed it for that shirt. You can really see the entire shirt. We love it. You can see every detail. Every detail. Every detail of that shirt. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting your day off with us. We have so much news today. Did we update? No. <laughs> find out that way. Why not find out uh, in a way that's not public? I don't know. Just thought I'd see. Anthony. Just thought I'd see. Because what I was going to say <coughs> is this brand new camera is, of course, due to the generosity of y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I already talked about it on my stream. This was uh, very kindly purchased by a viewer um, and a member of the community, Kurt. Thank you, Looks Kurt. Great. Looks great. Yeah. We love um, it. Thank you all so much. Uh, and, of course, we uh, we shoot the show by ourselves in a shed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not a corporate. Well, we are a corporation because you legally have to fill out that paperwork. Yes. But we're a corporation that is uh, just a few people in a shed. Yeah. <laughs> Turns so, out anyone can be a corporation. You don't have to make money. You can just be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just be like... I'm a corporation now. You spin around uh -huh. three times and say, I'm corporation. And you give the government money, even though you're not making money. Yeah, but then if you become a corporation that makes money, you don't give the government any money. Maybe one day. So, you want thank you so much you want for all of your generous donations. They directly impact us and the network, the whole channel. Very cool of you. So very cool of you. Uh, speaking of very cool, started this show with, uh, started this morning with some very cool big news. There was big, big news. Uh, you know, we've been asking a long time, for a long time now. We've been asking for months. Mm-hmm. Where's the game? Hey, 343. Three. You making the game? Are you making the game, Halo? It's okay if you're not making the game. But we want to know. We'd you know, like you to be honest with us. You don't have to pretend you're making the game if you're not making the game. Right. Like that, we would never make you do that. We no. want we want you to be happy. You know what I mean? And if you're happiest not making the game, 
then that's okay. But do tell us. But do tell us. You know, we were we were a bit confused because they were doing things like uh, smashing pianos and uh-huh. uh, and base and just and just talking in very long corporate sentences, kind of giving us everything but the game. Yeah, but this morning, after a couple very successful, very fun, according to all accounts, uh, multiplayer tests, mm-hmm. we got a six minute preview of the actual campaign for Halo Infinite. Let's check it out. Let's take a look. Nope. nope. Camera, no. Halo was about Master Chief. We might get double over here. Hold on. I think we've got it. But that is now yeah, we got it. Memory. Okay. And taken control of the mysterious Zeta. Don't worry. Johnny Spartan's always there. Tight. You need hope. You gotta hot wire Johnny Spartan together. <laughs> Spartan one seven, <clears throat> Master Chief. I mean it looks it looks good so that far. It's really pretty. We have a new mission, soldier. What is he? What's down there? A weapon. A weapon? A weapon. How many guns do you I'm need? Johnny Spartan. Why do I feel like his mouth word move weird? His mouth maybe move a little weird. He's dead. We also could have a little bit of like a, a, a sync because we're going over HDMI. It wasn't the sync. It, 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 it wasn't the sync for me. It was just the way. The, it was the actual phone yeah. of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. We're looking at some. We're looking at some interiors here. Beautiful. It's great. Now this one, of course, has um, gi- you know, this one's supposed to have like giant open area worlds, mm-hmm. and they're showing that off. It looks good in motion. Oh, wow. <laughs> just running somebody over. I like that, you know, here's the thing. Like, I don't know how it looks over, you know, the compression and everything. But I'll say this. It looks really good, and they managed to keep the really shiny Halo look that I like. Yeah, Everything's just, just really shiny. Yes. There's our new, uh, there's our new fully dressed AI. The, the weapon. Good for them. Order received. Stand by. I need to play that. <laughs> they just draw it. It's just like, cunk, cunk. They know how we're playing. Yeah, I, I love that. There's something kind of nice about the fact that they're not cleaning up these rough edges because that those sort of feel very Halo to me. Like, I want that ship like to some, bounce when they drop right, it. Right, it feels like someone actually playing the game. Yeah. So the banished are the uh, are the new are the new bad boys. That's the new bad boy. Oh, looks a little Thanosy. Yeah, everybody love a Thanos. Everyone can have their own Thanos. Yeah. Ooh, Johnny. Ooh, less Thanosy like. It's so funny because now my brain is so wired into Destiny. Yeah. All I see when I look at Halo is Destiny. <laughs> Even though Destiny is the derivative of Halo. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh. Uh, the open world is great. I always found their um, shooting mechanics, though significantly more difficult than others for me. Uh, to be way more satisfying. Oh, the 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 loop of the gameplay loop of actual gunfight in Halo is, I think, the best. Yeah. And I mean, that's why that's why I enjoyed Destiny so much, is because there's just something they they have a they have a good grasp on how to satisfyingly design a weapon loop. Mm-hmm. facility up ahead, Chief. Some kind of salvage operation. What do we do? Flannel Fries is saying the Banished are from Halo Wars, that um, the RTS game that they put out. You remember oh, wow, that? Yeah. That's fun. Bring them back. Ugh. That looks sick. It looks really good. I love this. I love this. They're doing a lot of use of the grenades. Yeah, I love his grapple. Yeah, the grapple's awesome. Dude, did you? We showed the clip on the show of Andy Cortez grappling onto a banshee. Yeah, we did. Holy shit. Being able to do that stuff in an open world campaign is gonna break it so much. Like, oh, 
you know, obviously a lot of the delays and stuff were due to were due to COVID and and due to a lot of a lot of other, you know, physical world concerns. Uh-huh. But I think I think also like when you just pull the rails off a of Halo, I feel like a lot of real fucky things happen, and they've just had to like figure all those things out. Yeah. You know. Which is why it took them so long. Yeah. And fair. And also, you got to drop pianos. Yeah, they got to spend time breaking pianos. Look at that. He's just hopping from banshee to banshee. Oh, my God. Damn. <gasps> Woo! You got to do the loop. Got to do the loop. I mean, this, this looks really good. Look at those new little flying monkeys. Look at those little Wizard of Oz monkeys with guns. You know what I wonder? What do you wonder? We're at a weird point in important time with gaming where um, Fortnite blew up in popularity and mm-hmm. then Fortnite kind of has fallen to where people were just like, I don't know, I want a shooter to play with my friends now. Yeah. And like people our age are playing. Do you think they'll move to Halo? I think so. I think a lot of people, at least temporarily. So we just saw two new villains. We mm-hmm. saw the Spartan Killer and then we saw uh, the Harbinger of Truth. Which is he's, she's a badass lady who just punched Johnny Spartan through eighteen walls. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are going to move over to Halo at least for a while because here's because here's the, the people thing. who just played it because they wanted a shooter to play with their friends. Yeah, you know, like I have a lot of friends that aren't so much into Fortnite as they are in the uh, general get together once a week and mess around in Fortnite. Yeah, it's way more fun to mess around in a Halo. Map. Right, right. Like this would be way more fun. Way more fun. To I'm mess trying around to in steal planes. Map. I'm trying to do the loop. Yeah. I want to do all the weirdy stuff. I want to be, you know, I want eight dudes balanced on a warthog. All the dumb shit. Plus, yeah. there's, plus there's grappling hooks now. Yeah, there's grappling hooks. It's going to be fun. And then, you know, if and when they get the forge out, that's huge. Yeah, forge night. Forge night. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Listen, once again, I'm going to let all of you know I don't know what a hype train is. And if you tell me, I'll ban you. But something is happening. Something's happening. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so that's very exciting. And, you know, Microsoft has got a lot of big things up their sleeve. They're working on a lot of gigantic stuff. I, I think one reason that Halo probably got delayed is they've been putting so much time into this Wu-Tang RPG. Wu-Tang RPG. As in the Wu Tang Clan, they said um, the Wu Tang Clan lore is yeah. based on Wu Tang Clan lore. Now there is a lot of Wu Tang Clan lore. Sage is somebody who spent his entire uh, high school career high. Uh, I, I what? Oh yeah, the it, Shaolin. Please. I know nothing of the Wu Tang Clan lore. Oh, so much deep lore. So much deep lore. No, no, no okay. Here's what I'll tell you about Wu Tang Clan. I'll tell you two things about the Wu Tang Clan. Okay. Number one, it's for the children, and number two. It's nothing to fuck with. Okay, so answer this for me. Yeah. Because like I'm I'm going in with no information here. The Wu Tang clan. Yeah. The lore that surrounds it. Is it like made up? They have a fun fictional story that they have surrounding the Wu Tang clan? No. These, or is this I'm, These men are actual ninjas. I don't know if there's ninjas involved. These men are actual kung fu I, masters. I didn't know the lore is ninja. These are kung fu masters. I'm serious. I'm asking a real question. Yeah, I'm giving you a real answer. God damn it, Anthony. Uh, the the n- no, but they've they've come up with a they've come with a they've come up with a, like a whole backstory and that's there what is, I'm saying. Is yeah. there's there's like a, a there's, fictional story tied to the, there there is intense the clan. Lore. There is intense lore to the Wu Tang Clan. Uh, you may remember those of you uh those of you who like me have uh take take Tylenol for your back. You might remember that uh, the Wu Tang Clan had a game for the PS One that was then canceled, but came out sort of as like an unreleased, like the beta made the rounds, and mm. it was uh, a Wu Tang fighting game based on all their lore. It was later later released as a Thrill Kill. They took the same engine and just replaced the Wu Tang Clan. Uh, oh, yeah, the Wu Tang okay. Clan. They've been they've been around, and now seems like the time. Now's the time. Listen, you got to strike while the iron is hot. And clearly, now is the time for a Wu-Tang Clan RPG. Clearly, they're still as relevant today as they ever were. The children still know. 
And like, I went, I went through a phase of listening to a lot of like '90s rap in particular. Mm-hmm. I never, I never got into Wu Tang Clan. Oh, you should. Hmm. You absolutely should. They're great. Huh. You I went through a big like Death Row Records phase, but fascinating. I didn't know. I didn't know there was lore. Come to find out, there's lore. There's a Hulu show. There's a Hulu show. That's great. Honestly, the best ever episode of the classic television series MTV Cribs was Method Man and Red Man showing off their house in Harlem. When, why do you? Because you just look it up. You have to watch it. It is fucking hilarious. It is one of the it is one of the greatest pieces of like meta like meta media ever. Sorry, it wasn't Harlem, it was Staten Island. Sorry. It is so good. It is so good because it's after they're like they're selling they're they're like selling millions of albums. Uh-huh. And MTV goes to do cribs with them. Because at this point, MTV was going to every hip hop artist's of course. mansion, you know, and it was like, here's my five story aquarium and my you know my 18 cars and method and red decided to just rent an apartment for the day on staten island like a studio apartment and pretend it was theirs and it was so good they like had all their money in like a shoebox in the freezer it was fucking good it was fucking good wasn't there one with odb cashing his welfare check i believe so that might not have been the same episode of cribs but they totally, every time MTV was like, come be these hip-hop MTV superstars and do the MTV thing, they are always like, yeah, 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 we got you, we got you. Fascinating. Yeah. I love them. All right. I love them. Are you going to play the, are you actually going to play the RPG? Is it coming to Game Pass? Microsoft's making it, so I'd imagine it's yeah, coming it's to Game totally Pass. Yeah, it's totally coming to Game Pass, I'll dude. play the Wu-Tang game, I'll play the Wu-Tang game on Game Pass. Listen. One of the best one of the best tracks on the Batman Forever soundtrack is the Riddler is the Riddler theme. Mm-hmm. Which is a Wu Tang joint. The Kill Bill soundtrack. Mm-hmm. They're still out there. They're still making music. Yeah. I want to talk about a rumor. Let's talk about a rumor. Now, Shaggy's relevant to you. Shaggy Shaggy is relevant to me. If you weren't here for Costume Friday, go back and watch our Costume Friday episode. Uh where I, I we dress got... up as Shaggy. I got so many DMs about how offensive your facial hair about was. About how horrible I looked. I listen, never like listen. I don't nobody slides into my DMs. I'm the oldest man on the internet. But I had so I at first I woke up in the morning I was like, "Wow, I have so many I have so many DMs. This is what's going on." It was everybody telling me shave the goatee. Yeah. They wouldn't even. They didn't even look at it long enough to understand it was a joke. Mm-hmm. They just looked at it and said, "That has to go. That has to go." Anyway, so yes. Uh, let me pull this back up. So, through a rumor site, and confirmed by the rumoriest of all rumor uh, leaks. What's his name? Um, uh, Jeff Grubb. Jeff Grubb. Sure. Supposedly, a crossover style fighter is coming from WB. Oh. Which would be very interesting. So, it's said to star Shaggy, mm-hmm. Batman, Gandalf. These four go into a room. Uh huh. Only one walks Which out. Which one walks out? <laughs> Shaggy, he runs. I mean, the, now the rumor story is using a uh, an image a shot of yeah. Ultra Instinct Shaggy, right? Which, of course, WB did make a little animatic of to like canonize uh, Ultra Instinct Shaggy. Uh, and Ultra Instinct Shaggy led um, by a meme about putting Shaggy in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look. Uh, here's the thing about Nickel. Uh, here's the thing about All Star Brawl. Our All Star Brawl, which is still a pain in the ass to say, uh, I feel like came and went really quick. 
Yes. It came out. The hype for it, the hype for it was in in really small increments, so it was very consistent news. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like, yeah, it's out. Okay. Well, I think it came out and and it was really, you know, IGN was releasing in with the developer all of those videos that were like in depth fighting mechanic looks and like, look, here's everything you're gonna be able to do and People were really excited for it. And then the game came out and the fighting was kind of flat. Yeah. It was a little it was a little janky. I haven't seen a ton of the reviews for it yet. It was a little janky. It was a little buggy. And mm-hmm. there's nothing they can't necessarily patch out. But here's the thing. I would not try to drift off of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I would not try to drift off of All Star Brawl. But to be fair, this was most likely in development before we saw that. That's true. That was probably during the hype train. Right. So I mean, which I have no idea what that is. Right. But like, it makes sense that everybody's trying to make one of these things right now. Like, oh shit, Nickelodeon can do it. Yeah. Nintendo did it. Okay. Well, we could have one of those. Yeah. And but, no reason we couldn't. But that's what I'm saying is, is All Star Brawl is kind of maybe the reason you can't. Yes, that's maybe it's entirely possible that that's how that shook out after yeah. the fact. Um, I'm intrigued. I can't see it being terribly unique when All Star Brawl exists. I mean, maybe if they made a really good fighting game. Yeah. Here's well, the thing. and this is the exciting thing about the rumor. Mm-hmm. Jeff Grubb says it's Nether Realm. No, Jeff Grubb says it is not Nether Realm. Oh. The rumor originally said that it was Nether Realm. Uh, Jeff Grubb said it. Uh, it is in development. It is not Nether Realm. Oh, I went, I went like this. Uh huh. And then I went like this. Yeah. Um, we also know, you know, everybody's trying to get their, everybody's trying to get their IP into as many different things as possible right now. Um, and everybody's searching their catalog to go. What's got money in it? They're picking up and shaking all of the individual little piggy banks that they own. Yeah. They say things like Lord of the Rings. DC. But here's the thing. Scooby Doo. If if WB wants to know if that's going to work, there's interest in that. All they need to do is look back a few years at Lego Dimensions. Mm, interesting. Right? Because here's the thing Lego Dimensions used a lot of that IP thinking they were going to bring in kids, but also like parents who are into things like Ghostbusters, Lord of the Rings, all that stuff. And it could just be the Toys to Life thing. Yeah. But Lego Dimensions did not do super well. Now a lot of these, you know, a lot of these uh, IP are getting uh, are getting new stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. there's Lord of the Rings has the Amazon show coming out that won't be linked to the movies, but you know WB could drift off of that. Uh, you know, there's a new there's new Ghostbusters movie is coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I'm curious to see. We'll see if it even gets to the point of this. What we do have so far is that they have uh, copyright. Uh, a trademark application in for the name Multiverses. Multiverses is a good name. That's a good name. It's a good name. That's I can't a believe good name. nobody's done that yet. Yeah, right? Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, that's not already a game. That's a good name. Yeah. Um. So I would like for this to be real. I think it could be very fun. And the like, the thing in the rumor is that it's literally inspired by the Ultra Instinct Shaggy meme. I love that. Which, like, that would be tight. <sighs> that's fun. That's I, fun. I love the idea of them building a game around that and really going for it. Um, my hope for it mm-hmm. is that they would go very cartoony with it. Yeah. I sure. hope that in the way that like All Star Brawl really wanted to be Smash, yeah. I hope that they commit to having their own thing and letting it be cartoony. Yeah, I'd love to see it be more like a like an arcadey tag team thing. Exactly. Like that's when they said Nether Realm. I was kind of excited. Uh, this is the. This is the reported or alleged lineup, mm-hmm. uh, and let's go. Let's go down this and see how we feel about it. I mean, obviously okay. we've got Shaggy. Yes, we, we're into that. Yeah, the idea gotta have it. Ultra Instinct Shaggy in a fighting game is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned Gandalf. Gandalf as a fighting game character, I think, is cool. Fascinating. I mean, you've already you've got a picture with like the f-ing sword, you know. Like, yeah. You could do you could do some cool shit. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Tom and Jerry as a duo. If they were, yeah, if they were, like, ice climbers. Uh-huh, exactly what I'm thinking. If it was ice climbers, Tom and Jerry, but they're fighting each other as they're fighting you. And so, like, everything they do is them trying to take each other out, but as it they, hits like, you. they, roll and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, I could see them being, like, ice climbers. I could alternatively see them being, like, Pokemon trainer. Where yes. you kind of tap between them. I'd be okay with that as well. Uh, the next one on here is Batman. Here, wait. And here's what you got to do with Batman. 
you've really got to pick a version of Batman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you've got, I mean, th- that's this is what you're talking about, where like everything is cartoony. You've got to find a way to make all these characters cohesive. Mm-hmm. And like, w- when you list these characters, Gandalf wins, right? And then, and then if Gandalf isn't there, Batman wins. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which like it doesn't matter as we've been proven by a bunch of things, but I guess you do look at the Smash Bros. character and you're like, almost all of these characters fight mm-hmm. in their games. Not all of them though. I mean, Isabel kicks ass in there. Yeah, and that's true. Fight. That's true. Uh, you got Fred Flintstone. There's nobody kids care about more than Fred Flintstone. <laughs> listen, when you listen, when I see a kid on the street, all they're talking about is the Flintstones and the Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, that's what the kids are into. <laughs> Uh, someone said they think they remember this conversation with Patrick Starr and the Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, that was about uh, Nickelodeon Star Brawl. Yeah. Um, uh, Mad mm. Max. That's fun. And which version? I mean, I guess they could just pull from the video game. Yeah, that's fun. They could just pull the video game Mad that's Max. That's fun. And then lastly, Johnny Bravo. Listen. Our problematic fave. Jonathan Bravo. I get it. Hasn't aged well. No. At all. Butch Hartman hasn't aged well. No. no. There's a lot that's there's a lot that's not great about that, but that one's that one's for the dads. You know? Uh it's kind of interesting. I I'd love I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. I would love to try I would love to play it. Who knows how it will turn out. Uh going on going on to other uh game character news. You know Jill you know Jill Valentine from Fortnite? Pardon? You from, know from Jill Valentine from Fortnite. No, from And Chris Redfield from Fortnite. Wait, um, I've not Resident Evil? Why would no, from Fortnite. Oh Are they doing a Fortnite are they doing a Fortnite spin off with Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield from Fortnite? <laughs> and they can fight they can fight Paul Atreides from Fortnite? Yeah. Of course. It makes sense. Resident Evil collab. Everybody's in Fortnite. Uh, Hermit Homeboy says, you know, like Ryu from Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Superman from Fortnite. Superman from Fortnite. Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah, that makes sense that they're in Fortnite. Uh, so. That's fair. They released a good little te- teaser. Uh, Chris and Jill are uh, available individually for 1500 V-Bucks each, or you can buy them in a Stars bundle. Uh, they come with alternate skins. Uh, Chris comes with his Hound Wolf squad, and Jill is Raccoon City style Jill as opposed to Stars Jill. So that's fun. It comes with uh, extra Fortnite things for your Fortniting. That is very interesting. I do see the typewriter on there. Yeah, and I'm get... like, how do you use the typewriter in Fortnite? So they're only, uh, you know, the typewriter. How does it work in you know Fortnite? Gu- you know the Gutenberg press from Fortnite? How does it? You know how Fortnite gave us a. Uh, Gave us the ability to mass produce printed matter. Uh, they're basically Is they're cosmetics right? to wear on your back. You can wear like one of the red, blue, or green herbs on your back. You could wear a typewriter on your back. Why um, would you wear it on your back? Ty- typing of the dead, ex Resident Evil, ex Fortnite. Why would you wear a plant or a typewriter, but especially a typewriter on your back? What? To save your to save your game. What a weird way to put that in. I was like, oh, the typewriter. That's a nice thing to bring over. It's probably like an environmental thing that you interact with. It just is it's there how any you save in Fortnite? <laughs> is there anyone left that isn't in Fortnite? We're not in Fortnite. Ariana Ariana Grande has two Fortnite skins. That's not fair. Let us be It's Too Early from Fortnite. Yeah, we're It's Too Early from Fortnite. Come on. Uh, Come on, Epic. Come on. Uh. Come on, Epic. Uh, something that we didn't get to talk about on Friday because it happened during the show. I do want to want to point out really, really quick. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I just love to talk about Pokemon. We all love to talk about It makes me very, very happy. The Pokemon Twitter account posted a tweet that says, Research update. Thank you for your reports, trainers. A few days ago, a researcher uncovered some mysterious footage in the Hisu. Hisui? Hisui. Hisui region. Uh, Professor Oak looked uh, through all of your findings and was able to restore the video. Please take a look. Look, it's. Can you give us a little? Oh, I guess Nintendo's a little tight, but no, it's okay. Okay. I think because it's just talking. Will you give us a little? Yeah. I'm hoping to document some wild Oops. I think we'll be on using on Twitter video. 
It's a little fake found footage video. It really is beautiful. But you can see new here. Pokemon. Everything around me is blanketed in snow. It's so cute. I do have a question about video cameras in feudal Japan. But we'll figure that out later. It doesn't matter. I fucking love these guys. I fucking love a snow runt. We've got we've got Pokedexes. We can have video cameras. That's true. I had so many snow runts in Pokemon Go. Look at them. I'm going to try climbing up there. What is this? It's very cute. I love this. This is a very different kind of marketing move for Nintendo and Pokemon. Yeah. This is not usually their jam. I appreciate them doing something a little special for us. Thank you. Pokemon? Is that a No, dude, that's not a Growlithe. No, dude. No, dude. I think it's turning No, get out of there, dude. It's a No. The white fur on top of its head and around its neck is so It's fluffy. adorable. Where's its where's its dad where's its mom and dad, dude? What's that? <laughs> cute. So much cute. I'm so excited by this. It's so good. It's so good. It really is. Uh, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. We're just a couple months away now. Yeah, it's coming soon. What's our date in 2022? I think uh, Arceus is, uh, is January, February, something like that. Let's see. I believe it's 28th. There it is. Confirmed. Man. It's coming up. January 28th is coming up. Would you believe that? Which, no. Would you fucking believe that January is right around the corner? Leave me. Tuesday's coming. Did you wear your coat? Tuesday uh, is coming. You're right. Hey. We don't glorify anything Activision Blizzard are doing right now. No, of course not. But we do know that there are still employees inside of Activision Blizzard that got to do the best they can. Uh-huh. And they have made a move that is, they've been talking about, has been much needed, and has been coming for a while. As of tomorrow... McCree, Jesse McCree, is Cole Cassidy. Excellent. Uh, as you know, Jesse McCree was named after one of the Activision, uh, Activision Blizzard developers who was prominently named in the uh, suit about harassment and mistreatment of employees. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. They immediately were like, oh, we got to take that name out of the game. Uh-oh, because now uh, we're caught. Um... You know, obviously, we also spoke previously about how in Overwatch League, uh, a lot of the players had already stopped using the name McCree. They were just calling him the Cowboy. Cowboy. Yeah, that was it. Uh, and like immediately, as soon as it was brought to light uh, in the league, they were just calling him Cowboy instead of saying McCree, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, and it's also nice because, hey, it's it's Mercer's character. Yeah. He deserves a new name. It's nice of them not to dig their heels <laughs> in. Right. It would be very easy for for a company, for a corporation uh, especially one like this that is sort of legally taking a position, as companies do, that we didn't do nothing. We didn't do anything. Uh, it would be very easy for them to dig their heels in and be like, we can't change this. He is McCree. He's been McCree for a while. There's merch. There's this. There's that. There's trademark filings. Nah. nah. That's Cowboy. His name is Cole Cassidy. I cannot recall if he's ever been called anything other than Cole Cassidy. No, I sure can't. And I love, and I love... That Matt, that Matt Mercer just booked a couple more hours in the booth. Yeah, there we go. Everybody just booked a couple more hours to redo their lines. Great. To say Cole Cassidy, and we yes. love that. Absolutely. And then, yeah, uh, Hermit Homeboy brings something up. Cole goes better with Ash mm -hmm. for shippers. Yeah, it does. Cole and cash. Ash. It's cash. Yeah. That's cute. That's cute. That's we very that. cute. You know, while we're talking about Activision this Blizzard, while we're talking about Activision Blizzard, maybe they're doing well, something. Well, go. while we're talking about Activision Blizzard, let's let's steer away from the Blizzard side and let's talk about Activision. Oh, I'd rather. Oh, but we're gonna. Okay. Call of Duty. I've heard of it. Call of Duty Vanguard. I've heard of it. Is on its way. And they really want you to buy Call of Duty Vanguard, no matter how trash of a company they are. 
They're going, uh, no, focus on Blizzard. We're, we're fine. We're we just make it. It. We're just making Call of Duty. We Don't just make the shoot mans. We're just, we're just making Call of Duty. Don't mind us. Uh, instead, we want you to focus on the epic intimacy of World War II. Y'all, chief marketing officer, the CMO, the person whose responsibility in this world to say things good and make things sound good. Uh, 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 tr uh, trigger warning for army men. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, said the Call of Duty Vanguard captures the epic intimacy of World War II. Incredibly immersive. First of all, why would I want that? Second of all, stop making games about World War II. So they brought in photojournalists, and these are these are conflict photographers, and they brought them in and interviewed them and gave them VR rigs, VR viewfinders, and had them take pictures inside of Call of Duty and compare it to the actual human atrocities that they have witnessed and tell them, hey, we get that atrocity right? Yep. They That's said, it. How realistic is is our atrocity? What? Hey, your job is to go into very dangerous places and shine a light onto the terrible things that we are that we are doing to one another in hopes that we will see it, process it, and work towards not doing it anymore. Did we get that blood right? Is it? And it's like, that's exactly it. It's like them running through and watching people die in this game and being like, pretty realistic, right? Just like World War II. Look. Look. Make, make okay, if you have to do a war game, make up a, make up a fake war. Why do, we keep, why do we keep doing real people's tragedies? Why do we keep doing that? I don't fucking get it. So... In addition to doing this as a marketing ploy, they also decided to do a little bit of a charity event out of it. And what they did is they took, uh, they took four of the screenshots that these photographers took, and they are uh, they are putting them up as uh, prints that you can buy, um, which will help U.S. military veterans. It's a veteran employment placement agency, uh, which is a good cause. Uh, but they're selling them for five hundred and fifteen dollars each. I don't. But that that is the thing that somebody at the table told them to do. Yep. Because you can't. Somebody at the table said you can't put out a commercial that says we murder people so real. We murder people so real that we we don't even think that um, conflict photographers will be able to tell the difference. And somebody at the table went, "Is there a way?" that we could not be the worst about this. <laughs> could we somehow be a little bit less than the worst of this? Still the worst. It's still the worst, though. Still the absolute worst. They didn't say, hey, you know what? Because we are benefiting financially and profiting off of rewriting and letting you play in, in conflict and people's greatest uh, trauma and uh, points of shame in our history... We could give a portion of proceeds of the game. They didn't do that. That would have been a lot of money. No, no, no. They said, we're going to make an extra thing that costs us nothing. And we're going to sell them for $500 to you. I just... I just don't understand how they can still be this toned up. You know, Spin and Dash says they had Oliver North as a spokesperson. Is this unexpected? You would think the backlash from having Oliver North as a so as a spokesperson would have taught them something. But instead they were like, take this weird virtual camera and you get that murder. And you let us know how murder it is. These are the prints they are selling. It looks like a video game. I mean, it looks like a screenshot from a video game. I don't know. I don't know. I just... Stop, stop, stop. Okay, we've done it. We've done World War II. Hey, we all I, remember. can I tell you something? I feel like we've done a lot of realistic war. 
period. Yup. Take a day off. Take a year off. Take a take a a decade. Take take a little time off. Do another game. Do another game. Actually, I mean, don't. Activision. And unfor- and Actually, Activision, don't. But, you know, unfortunately, Call of Duty, still one of the top-selling games. One of the top-selling game franchises. Don't. This, this, is, this is a cycle, right? They're feeding the cycle, but also they're getting good feedback from the cycle. They put these games out. They sell incredibly well. And this is your reminder not to buy Call of Duty. Yeah. Don't. We don't support Activision blizzard right now remember that we like we like that they renamed the cowboy listen in a situation like this bare minimum we do have to we do have to call out you did a decent you did the decent human thing we are not celebrating for you you for that we will see that you did the decent human thing could have donated profits uh let's palate cleanse let's palate cleanse i've got i've got our palate cleanser let's talk about I'd love to talk about the play we date. We love to talk about the play date. The play date, of course, is Panic's first uh, four way, foray into consoles. This is a... This is a... a, a look. It's a, it's a specialty console. Uh-huh. It's for a niche. It's a beautiful, it's perfect a, little Game Boy. It's a beautiful, it has perfect a little Game Boy. on the side. You play things with a crank. It's got a controller. It's got a crank. It's got a very, it's got a black and white high resolution screen. Your games get delivered to you once a week over uh, over Wi-Fi. You wake up, you have a new little game, uh, and then people can sideload games. Uh, you can develop your own games. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and somebody did something really amazing with it. Were you? I mean, I know you were a big. We've we've talked. GBA was really your jam. Yeah. But were you also like a like a DS person? Oh, I was a huge DS person. GBA, GB, like the the Game Boy SP. Mm -hmm. I had longer than I had my Advance. Um, but oh, I loved my DS. God, I think of straight hours, I probably put most time in on the DS. It's one of the top selling consoles of all time. I spent so much time. That was also like. When did the DS come out? I want to say like late middle school, early high school for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was in the car a lot. Like a lot at that yeah. point. Um, that's probably middle school. Yeah, the original DS was 2004. Yeah, so I was nine. Um, but on the... so Early middle you, school. What, what model did you have? Because on the DSi, there was something called Flipnote Studio. I had the uh, original silver clunky boy, mm-hmm. uh, and then later I had the pink DSi that had the cameras. Yeah. Yeah. So Flipnote Studio was a huge thing. Uh, you could send little animations to people. Yes, you I remember that. You send little notes. Uh, animators did amazing things with Flipnote Studio, and Flipnote Studio, of course, got shut down after the DS got shut down. But there are people that have been keeping it going. Uh, there's a gentleman, there is a developer that made a Flipnote player for the web, uh, a while back mm-hmm. uh, and you can go and upload your flip note files and this website reads them and plays flip notes back for you cute people are keeping it alive uh yeah uh, you you've probably seen uh kiki animator kiki mm-hmm. puts out those flip notes of birds oh the birds like birds dancing and bouncing around and yeah. did the one of like did the one of like tom nook all like wibbly wobbly yeah oh i forgot about the ds light i also had a ds light yeah ds light was ds great. ds light dsi um so Flip still has a huge and active community. Uh, and the developer of the web portal that lets you look at Flip Notes, uh, Rakajira James, got his hands on a play date early for development. <laughs> and there's a Kiki Flip Note animation right there. You can simply upload, and you can see he's controlling it frame by frame with either the D-pad or the crank. Come on. That's perfect. I love it. Works with all your classic Flipnote animations, and I believe you're going to be able to create Flipnote files within it as well. How? I don't know. How you draw on that? How like an etch sketch I mean, you might have to use the PC one. Yeah, I mean, like, using the D-pad and the crank. I don't know. Like an etch sketch It's so wild. So wild. I love it. 
I think that's adorable. I love the play date. It's it's just it's so cute. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yeah. Do I? Ha am I getting it? Yes. I haven't pre-ordered. I assume you've pre-ordered. Oh, of course. Of <sighs> course. I should be. I should be in the first. Uh, the first group of people. I think it's. I think it's so much fun. We've we've looked at some of the games. Yeah previously and they look absolutely adorable uh and a lot of great developers are making games they have they have developers signed on for this quote-unquote season and i think you're going to be able to buy additional seasons of games hopefully if things God, go well that's so good it's going to be so good it's going to be so good uh and i love just seeing old technology and old things like flip note survive yeah absolutely and the things that are kind of in the middle right where it's like you run into that era of I, I saw chat and I was thinking it as well, like nostalgia for Picto chat, mm -hmm. where it's like it's not quite to the point of like, you know, nostalgia for a lot of people yet or not quite to the point of like vintage to be preserved gaming. Yeah. Like but it's it not be. considered, but it should be. We're getting to that point. I mean, I think about stuff like uh, like me verse pick like me verse stuff. Uh, like things that were on the Wii U. Yeah, uh, or like the Wii in general. Yeah. I guess I'm at that point for the Wii. I don't know if I'm there for the Wii U. But things where things where people were like drawing messages for each other and things like that in Splatoon and all of this stuff that's like that ephemera, the community part of it is going to go away. You know, all that stuff is going to disappear. You'll yeah. you'll always be able to download Splatoon on an emulator, but right. like you're not always going to be able to like send those messages back and forth or right. see those messages or from see back what in the you day. were sent. Yeah. In 2004 on Picto chat. God, I loved Picto chat. Picto chat. I fucking loved Picto chat. Honestly, uh, I'm going to disable my email. And only Picto chat. If you want to work with me, you have to hit me up on Picto chat. Uh, I want to talk about Spiderman. Oh, I'd love to talk about Spider-Man. Uh, Spiderman PS4. Okay. Uh, one of the, one of the greatest games, just one of the greatest games of, course. of all time. Uh, Dan Slott was about King Spider-Man PS4. Dan Slott, of course, is a big Spider-Man writer for uh, for Marvel. He he was the person who brought us the Spider Verse in the comics, so uh, he's he's a big deal. And when he was working with Insomniac to make the game, the Insomniac developers were like, "Hey, could we somehow get away with not having Aunt May in this game?" Uh, because the thing is, Aunt May is old, and wrinkles are hard to animate. Uh, old people take five times for the to make one old person. This is what they told Dan Slot: to make one old person technologically, it would take us the same amount of time as it would take us to make five other characters. That's rough. And so they were like, maybe she just calls Peter and like Ooh, that's rough. you talk to her on the phone and ah. she's there, but like she doesn't have to be there. And Dan Slott was like, look, it sounds it sounds a little icky, but they're coming from a real place technologically where they're on a deadline. Mm -hmm. I believe them when they say it's harder to render older characters than it is younger characters. Sure. That makes sense. But he was like, look, you got to. I don't know if that's the take Aunt, we put Aunt out. May's got to be in there. Like, you can't, you can't not do it. And what he basically said was like, look at Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei isn't old. Aunt May doesn't have to be 85-year-old Aunt May. Mm -hmm. Make her less wrinkly. It's, it's le <laughs> the number of wrinkles on Aunt May is less important than the appearance of Aunt May in Peter's life. Yeah, Aunt May should be there. Um, and also, like. Why'd you put out that take? Why'd you say that? I think, you know, I I think Dan Slott was just, he was talking about what it was like for him working on a game because he had not done it before. And he does go on to say in the interview, he's like, look, this was a very early on point of contention. And in all honesty, we didn't really have any other conflicts. Yeah. It was just a thing where I don't think they realized that like making the technological argument in that case was making a bad argument for story. Yeah. Like, they just didn't get it. Because they're, they're video game developers, and they're used to when somebody from your technology team sits down and goes, it's going to take us six months to make Aunt May. Somebody from the, you know, it's the job usually of somebody from the art or story team to go like, okay, how do we work around that? Yeah. How do we get the game out? Right. 
you know? Yeah. So I'm glad somebody from Marvel was there. I'm glad Dan Slott was there to be like, no, no, no. What else can we do? Right. Uh, so, yeah. That's funny. That's funny. This is a weird thing that it's happened. It's just a weird thing. You know, weird thing happens. Uh, oh, yeah. Talk about We're talking about, we've been talking about some, some nostalgia. Let's talk about Mario Party. Now, as you may know, Mario Party got that huge update. They made a full game of Mario Party. Ugh. We love to see it. We're very excited for it. Um, and there was an original Mario Party uh, man on N64 minigame called Tug of War. Right. Uh, that's known to have caused some harm. Yeah. Uh, and this, this update added about 100 minigames from mm -hmm. across the entire history of Super Mar of Mario Party. And the inclusion of Tug of War made a lot of people's ears perk up. Do y'all remember Tug of War? Oh, I remember the shit out of Tug of War. You know what? If you don't, just in case, let, let me hit you with that nostalgia. Let me play it for you. So this is what Tug of War looks like. I just wanted to watch the whole animation because it makes me happy. Oh, yeah. Ugh. So one player is dressed as Bowser. One player becomes Bowser. Mm -hmm. The other players... Oh, is somebody emulating? Somebody's emulating. That's okay. Uh... And the other three players have to tug against the very strong Bowser. Looks easy. Do you remember how you control tug of war? Nintendo 64 analog pad. Yep. You've got to In spin the direction it. of pulling it away. Yeah. Very quickly. What did everybody find out? You get blisters. You got hurt your hand. Yeah, because this... It doesn't feel so good. This is fine. But that's not going to do it. This. Oh, this thing. Oh, this my God. This does it. Oh, my God. I remember doing that. That's the only way to get it that uh -huh. fast. Fuck. That's the that's only way to get so it that funny. fast. A hundred percent. So you're on the analog stick and you're just going like this to the point where in 2001, Nintendo had to put out a warning. Yeah. That kids were getting cuts, blisters, and burns, and to not do this with it. The, the compromise that Nintendo came up with, and Nintendo does this a lot. Yeah. You might remember like when people were accidentally throwing Wii's and stuff like that, they sent you like <laughs> they sent you the Wii straps, condoms. Yeah. Do you, well, I forget what they were actually called. Do you remember when they said they started uh, yeah. packaging the Wii condoms? The and weird things? like rubber thing that made the front of your controller like thick and squishy yeah and like dirty and icky yeah we always got it was so gross Ugh. so they they have a history of doing this these are their make goods and the make good for mario party was they would send you if you if your parents wrote in they would send you four pairs of protective mario party sports gloves to play the game with that's so funny i had no idea yeah you would get fingerless gloves with padded palms. I'm wonder. I, I'm trying to see if I can find a story. These, all of these are, these are old stories. So I'm gonna try, see if I can find. Uh, <laughs> someone said one kid got a tetanus shot. Yeah. The alarming was how little some of these children, uh, how little time some of these children spent playing the game before they were injured. One parent said their child had been playing the game for 15 to 20 minutes when they got a second degree burn. Okay, so here it is. They were not like Nintendo branded gloves by any means. Nintendo got basically like sports pad, like weightlifting gloves. They just went and bought a bunch of them. Just bought a bunch of them. They just made went to Costco. <laughs> yeah, they basically did. And they were like, here you go. Have these cool weightlifter gloves. <laughs> Have these cool weightlifter gloves so you don't hurt yourself playing Mario Party Tug of War today. That's very funny. This is such, like, Nintendo has such a history of this, though, because, you know, Nintendo's whole thing is, like, simple interaction that feels like a lot. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that, like, has always rested on you believing you're doing what you're doing. Right. Right? 
So you believing you're going to do it the right way. Uh, so like even back in the day with like the Nintendo power pad, like nobody ran on it. Everybody got down on the ground and pounded it with their fists because it was faster. Yeah. You know, and when you had to do like the long jump, mm -hmm. people didn't jump like straight up. They jumped off the pad. Yeah, absolutely. And then I would wait like 10 seconds and jump back on. It would be like, you set a new record. You jumped 13 miles. Yeah. Except or for mm. the only exception is Wario wears smooth moves. I don't care if it doesn't know. I don't care if there is a trick. I'm doing it. I'm going for it. I do I'm everything committed. Wario Wear tells me to everything. do. Everything. This is the warning they put in. It's clearly on the Wii. Yeah. That's the new one. To avoid irritation to your skin and or damage the control stick. Damage to the control stick. Do not rotate it with the palm of your hand. Don't do that. Hey, Cheater McCheat. Hey, don't do that. Do it right. I love that. That's so funny. Um, so yeah, do it. Don't get blisters. No blisters. Uh, so tug of war is back because uh, Mario Party Superstars uh, is is out. I want to play. I want to get together and have a Mario Party night. I would with love all the new mini games. Oh, I would love to have a little Mario Party. I think I'd like that. that I would think be I'd wonderful. like to have a Mario Party. We, hey, we should have a Mario Party. Let's have a Mario Party. Let's do it. All right. Party planning happening live during this show. Uh, speaking of nostalgia, it's a hell of a drug. Sure is. It causes people to do some crazy things. Yeah, it does. Uh, over the last year, we have seen the cost of Pokemon cards skyrocketing. Ooh, people do be paying many dollars for a Pokemon card. They do. And also making it really difficult for kids to get Pokemon cards. Who just want Pokemon cards? There's nothing there's nothing cooler than watching another TikTok of like two dudes beating the crap out of each other in a Walmart trying to get and like looking around and being like, "Oh, there are no kids to be seen anywhere. This is just this is just two grown men who really are going to fight over a squirtle." See, I'm, I'm not on that side of TikTok. Like it's and I'm fighting over a squirtle, squirtle TikTok. It, it it just I don't see it in my feet. One of them will go viral every once in a while, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, this is a story from the Macon Telegraph in Macon, Georgia. Um, about a man who desperately wanted an undisclosed Pokemon card. I want, I want to say off the top, we don't know what card this was. He got, he got a COVID relief loan for his business. Said... Uh, hey, I have X number of employees, and I need COVID relief for all of my employees. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Took that money, got, uh, got 50, got a, got a COVID relief loan and spent $57,000 of his COVID relief loan on a single Pokemon card. No. Did he still give everything he was supposed to give to his employees? They're not real. Oh, no. Did he go and get some employees to give money to? They're not real. Did he go and hire some people? No. Ah. Uh, no, he got one Pokemon card. God damn it. Uh, he is, of course, being charged with... Uh, He's get, uh, for wire fraud. <laughs> he's being charged with Pokemon fraud. He's being charged with he's being charged with uh, not being a very cool Pokemon trainer. Yeah. He's being charged with not uh, not being sportsmanlike. Right. Unsportsmanlike Pokemons. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This, uh, the gentleman's name is uh, Vinath Odomiz Odomzin, and he is facing a criminal charge, one count of wire fraud. Uh, that's all they've got him on right now. The charge carries a maximum sentence of up to 20 years in federal prison and $250,000 in fines. Uh, he will probably not. That's that's maximum. I do have, there was actually a photo of him being arrested for his crimes. Oh, there it is. Get him, Joy. Jenny. Jenny. Sorry, Joy is the nurse. Joy is the nurse. Uh, so Get him, Jenny. He's been caught. He'll, go, he'll to. come to justice. 
A cab, even Officer Jenny. I'm sorry. Uh, just so you know, even though we don't know what this card is, fifty-seven thousand dollars makes this the tenth most expensive Pokemon card purchase of all time. Uh, it just beats out the forty-five thousand one hundred dollars spent in December 2020 on a uh, X an X Dioxys Gold Star Hollow Rayquaza. Too much money, everybody. Hey. Too much money. That's wild. And it, like, we don't even know. He did, you know, there's no comment from this gentleman. We don't know if he's a, po like, I would hope he's a Pokemon fan. Uh-huh. I wonder if he's speculating. You know, like, maybe he's just, like, he knows Pokemon cards are worth a lot. Yeah. And so he bought something, and then he's going to... Hoping it's, like, an investment. Yeah, because we don't know what the total amount of money he got was and what all the things he bought were. We just know everybody's reporting on this one thing because it is weird. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he bought uh, some Lindsay Lohan for Sona F NFTs. Yeah. I hope so. Um. Anyway, there are... Look, I understand when being a fan of something makes you make irrational decisions sage even though we don't spend our money here on useless things no of course not we're very responsible we're very responsible with our money we would never spend our money on useless things especially large large chunks of money we would never do that no absolutely not we're very because we don't we're have. very fiscally <laughs> responsible what's that anthony Undercover, the June Takahashi streetwear brand, has finally released their Neon Genesis Evangelion collection. And if you're wondering what these are up at the top, well, they are RGB LED hoodies for $8,000. It's a good hoodie. That's a great hoodie. I don't have $8,000. I don't know if it's an $8,000 hoodie. $8, hoodie but let's take a look at, I mean, come on. No way it's machine washable. Absolutely not. Flannel fries. No way. <laughs> Is it machine washable? <laughs> uh, no, you just, that's just one that you wear and you take off real so you don't have to try to figure out how the fuck you would clean it. I do want to say the whole thing about like high-end fashion, sometimes it do be kind of scammy. They list the custom remote control for the RGB for the LEDs. It's just the one that always comes with LED strips. The one that you get off Amazon. Yeah, it just they just screen printed undercover on it. Yeah, that's the one that comes with like the little like little candles. My PC case came with one. Little fake candles. Yeah. They do have I do like these puffer these puffer jackets. Very cool. Six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. That actually works out to about five. Um but you know, if you want something that's like more affordable, you could always buy one t-shirts that only goes for $225 which have sold out that's rough I can't can you imagine somebody is gonna be walking around in one of those hoodies a bunch of people are somebody gonna be walking around in this which is like they're gonna look sick they're gonna look sick as hell it's already sold out no it's coming soon oh my god thank god Thank God, there's still time. And you say thank God, be, like you were going to buy it. No. Where would I even come up with that money? I'm going to Google how to get a credit card if you're a good boy. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to a little bit of movie news. Okay. Let's talk about the Barbie movie. Ugh. We're so obsessed with the idea of this Barbie we're movie. We're so obsessed with Greta Gerwig's Barbie movie. Starring Margot Robbie as Barbie. Of course. That's perfect casting. These these two filmmakers are going to do some wild shit with Barbie. It's Greta Gerwig, everyone. And we were wondering, who's going to round out this weird-ass cast that's going to do something weird and subversive and cool with Barbie? And we've got an announcement of who is playing Ken. And yeah, of course, it's honk, Ryan honk. Gosling. Honk honk, it's the goose. Ryan Gosling. She made the entire set honk, shake. Honk, I'm gonna need you to. I need, need you to stop doing that. It's like an earthquake in here. The and goose. I need you to not. The I'm goose gonna, is I'm gonna loose. Need you to, I need you to not. 
Ghost. Ryan Gosling is playing Ken. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the story so you stop doing it. Uh, Go on. I'm fine. Go on. Ken. I love this. It's great. I it's love perfect. this so much. Yeah. Somebody's like uh, uh, morbid android in the live studio audience is like not a Chris. Here's the thing. Greta Gerwig is going to do something about Barbie and Ken and fucking ennui because that's what she does. Greta Gerwig only does movies about people having quarter-life crises, midlife crises, really being, really feeling lost. Oh, the goose is going to bring that to Ken. I'm very, very intrigued to see what we do with this. I think this is very, very cool. I'm very excited. I've talked before about my love for like, the current status of Barbie mm -hmm. as is like the Barbie brand has done some dope ass shit in the last like five years um, through their YouTube channel and like, ugh, absolutely tight. Something shook the camera and moved the frame, I think. Yeah, Anthony. I wonder what happened. You want to get up and fix it? Sure, I'll get up and fix it. Yeah. It was just an act of nature. Remember when I asked you not to do it? Somebody asked who's going to be Skipper, and my answer is probably Sage Ryan, as 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 Goth Skipper, Barbie's Barbie's teen uh, Barbie's teen sister who's really going through some shit. I feel like Barbie's teen sister that's really going through some shit. Which way this way? Yeah, yeah Anthony, too far. There you go. It's got the uh, it's got the stabilization, so when you move it, it looks so smooth. Very nice. Looks so smooth. I cannot wait for this Barbie movie. It's gonna be so good. We are gonna, we're gonna we're going great. to have to wait though because it is still in development. There is no release date for Barbie. They're still casting. They're still working on stuff. But um, and this started off. We talked about this. This started off as an Amy Schumer film with Amy <gasps> Schumer as Barbie. Thank. God, Which, I'm sorry. But like Greta Gerwig taking over and making this a new thing. I don't like Amy Schumer movies. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy them. That's fine. Like, no, hey, the, whatever. Amy Schumer, do your thing. Bye. It would have been a very different thing, right? Like it would have been a much more straight up comedy, straight up parody of Barbie. Whereas, I don't, whereas I don't I need a parody this, of Barbie. Yeah, whereas I think this is going to actually sort of respect Barbie the whole idea of Barbie and what Barbie means to girls mm -hmm. and to women and like all of the societal things and also still be a fun, funny movie. Yeah. Like Greta Gerwig will just put more heart into it. That's all. I agree. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, continuing in movie news, obviously the, the talk of the town is Dune. Oh, Dune crushed it. Babies, pickles. Dune crushed it at the box office this weekend. The Kwisatch Haderach is back. And it made $200 million worldwide. This is the biggest release for Warner Brothers during the pandemic. And I believe it was a $40 million weekend, $200 million worldwide. It, of course, cost about $200 million. It's pretty, It needs to make about $300 million to be profitable. But we're not factoring HBO Max into that. Warner Brothers doesn't release those numbers. And we know that those factor very heavily into how they calculate a success right now. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, because people are like, are we going to get a sequel? Are we going to get uh, Children of Dune? Are we going to get the whole damn thing? The whole Dune thing. The whole Dune damn, the whole damn Dune Dune. We hope so. It seems like it's on point. Uh, and I'm to, sure. I'm sure it will. Yeah. It's it's a prestige film for them. And because of the because of the pandemic, it's already made a lot of money. People have been sharing their favorite uh, parts of the new Dune. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll avoid spoilers here. Don't yeah. worry. But it is a beautiful film. Here's Maggie Serrata mm -hmm. sharing one of her favorite parts of it. That this was is great. That's a, a great powerful part. Scene. Yeah. Um, of course, we have uh, we have Jacob Ollier sharing one of his favorites here. Mm -hmm. This was this was powerful. Paul's journey. Yeah, yeah. Of a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. I like, personally, this is a favorite of mine. Oh, 
I mean, look. We love the big worm. We love an effect shot, you know, and it, we know it's not all about effects, yeah. but they crushed it. Yeah, look at that. They crushed it, you know? God, that's unbelievable. I mean, and the thing that's, the thing that I really love about it, too, is that they nailed the look of the characters. Mm, yeah. You know, when you see when you see the characters Does walking it just around, feel like what you read. Yeah, it, you know, it really does. It really does. I I feel like I I was picturing in my head what what does Lady Jessica look like mm-hmm. and her and her and her retinue, and there she is. And I mean, that's exactly the way I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was obviously filled with action as well, which was really excellently done. Um, so I can't see why they wouldn't get a sequel. Yeah, it feels like it's doing it feels like it's doing everything right. Um, just a real quick I mean this one's a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, mm-hmm. but I just once again I have to show off that sandworm effect. It's it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, it is streaming right now on HBO Max as well as in the theaters. They did say, and this is interesting, they did say about 60% of the box office, if I'm correct, came from prestige viewing formats. So things like IMAX, 4DX. People people are really going to see this one yeah. in a in as big and special as possible. I mean, like, look, we haven't been to movie theaters in a while. We're still a little afraid of movie theaters. Mm-hmm. If we're gonna we're gonna risk it, go big. Go big. Go in. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited that Dune is cool. Yeah. Um, we have two more pieces of news that I want to really talk about here. Let's nail it. Uh, they gave us a poster for the Hawkeye series. Um, my personal opinion, too much Jeremy Renner. Sure, but that's my personal opinion about everything. Yes. I know that he's somewhere in L.A. right now, and I don't like it. Yeah, there's too much Jeremy you know Renner I mean? in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just, uh, that's just the way I feel. Yeah. But I will say... Marvel always knows, and they really are going for that, going for that Matt Fraction, David Aja vibe. They know how to get me. They know to include the dog. They do not know how to get me with Hawkeye. They do not know. I think that's so fascinating. Nothing that's been released for Hawkeye has impressed me. Well, you said that you, it's not that you're not a fan of, well, was it that you're not a fan of holiday movies or is it that you just felt like Hawkeye didn't need to be one? Both. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really into holiday movies. Uh, I'm not really into specifically Christmas movies. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't think Hawkeye need, needed to be one. I don't. Eh. Yeah. I think that we, we give a lot of leeway to, to Christmas movies that we enjoy them because they're Christmas and not necessarily good movies. That's fair. And I, I watched that, and I was like, that's what that looks like to me. It looks like one of those things that it's like, but it's Christmas. And it's like, okay. Yeah, but there's and? something there's there's something that I enjoy. Like, I really do. You know, you think about, like, a Shane Black movie. I love Shane Black. Shane Black is... I love Shane Black movies. Shane Black is, of course, a, a problematic gentleman. But when you think about things like a Shane Black action movie, like a Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, or even like an Iron Man 3, which is one of my favorite of the Marvel movies, Mm -hmm. he loves Christmas as a backdrop that doesn't really do anything other than like, it's there and Mm. it's visually pleasing and it's fun and it's kind of like a nice juxtaposition for what's going on in this action movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's wild that we're fighting robots on Christmas. You know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. And I think if they keep it sort of to that, um, right. I'll be very happy with it. You know, I don't want it to go full on Hawkeye tells us the meaning of Christmas or any of that shit. Yeah. But, you know, it's an eight episode series. And I think there's just something about New York during Christmas as a backdrop is mm-hmm. such an like. I think God, it could be it, a pretty backdrop if they let it be a backdrop. But I didn't yeah. see from the trailer it being a backdrop. People asked about Die Hard. I don't like Die Hard. She doesn't like Die Hard. I don't care about Die Hard. I don't have any particular dislike for it, but I don't like it's Die Hard. I don't care about Die Hard. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, someone said, long as it's not too Renner-centric, boy, do I have the secret. It's not for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It is real Renner-centric. We were hoping when this got announced that it was going to be for the majority that he was going to show up, pass it on, and peace out. And that is clearly not the case. No, but I do, like, the trailer definitely is like, 
I'm Hawkeye and I'm on vacation with my family that they just gave me. They just gave me and they never really needed to and they never really made it worth anything. Um, I'm here. I'm Hawkeye. I'm with my family that they gave to me. And there's another Hawkeye and doing Hawkeye things. I don't want to be Hawkeye right now. It's Christmas. I'm with my family. I'm Hawkeye. We know that Clint Barton is going to hand off the mantle of Hawkeye to Kate Bishop during this series. And mm -hmm. that's what's important. That's what's important is what, him leaving. What's important is he'll be leaving and Kate Bishop will be showing up and it's fine. And if they bring a little bit of Hawkeye the way I liked him in the comics into this series before he goes, it'll make me feel a little better as a Hawkeye fan. That's good. And I want that for you. Yeah. Uh, before we go, I would like to talk about the kind of holiday movie that I very much do like. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Close. Hocus Pocus. That's number, that, that's not number two, but where is that, would you say? Oh, man. That would be to figure out. If I'm saying just Halloween movies? family Halloween sort of movies. Ooh, Hocus Pocus is, yeah. I mean, maybe it might be. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to say it sits in it sits in maybe three, two or three. Three. So it's going to be so it's going to be Nightmare Before Christmas for sure. Uh huh. What's number two, like Worst Witch or something? See, because it depends on what you consider a Halloween movie. Yeah. Right. I have the movies that I like to watch at Halloween. Sure. Um. And if, like, you're just going to count those kind of things, I'm like, I'm going to watch Beetlejuice before I'm going to watch Hocus Pocus, but I'm going to watch both. Okay, gotcha. You know? Yeah, well, the, the, the um, judges, yeah, we'll take a Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice is not a Halloween movie, but it's my favorite movie of all time, and it's always appropriate. And of no. course, it's extra Halloween. Yeah. Of course. Uh, but Hocus Pocus is definitely up there, not just for you, but for... Everyone. Everyone. Of course. Ugh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. God, I wish I could go to a shadow cast. I used to go to a shadow cast the week of Halloween every year. Yeah. They know they're not open. They're not open they're not right open now. They're not open because of the, uh, the, the black death outside. Uh, but yeah, it's a big one for everyone. They just had a big uh, anniversary. They did mm -hmm. an anniversary live cast uh, with you know where the entire cast showed up and did like a, a Hocus Pocus live event. Yeah. And then they announced the Hocus Pocus sequel. Hocus Pocus 2 is currently in production. They are filming in Rhode Island. Very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got some photos from the set. Now, what's interesting about these photos is we are clearly seeing, and they, they have released information about this, we're seeing 1600 Salem. We are, we are seeing a flashback. There's apparently an entire burning of Salem scene. With a lot of, they've set up fire effects. They did a whole thing. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. I'm very, 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 very excited for Hocus Pocus 2. I think that, I think that the cast had a lot of love for that movie as something special. So I think they will do us right. Yeah. I'm going in with the expectation, even though it's scary to have a sequel to something you've loved and have loved for a long time. Um, I'm going with the expectation that they're doing this right. Yeah, same. I'm comfortable doing that. Yeah. I mean, that's three. I mean, listen, Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy. you know, two of the funniest fucking people on the planet. And Sarah, Sarah Jessica, Jessica Parker's Parker. best role. Best role. Sarah Jessica Parker's best role by far. She's amazing in it. Amazing in it. Amazing. She should have played characters like that forever. Why not? Why not? Why not? Actually, my second favorite Sarah Jessica Parker role is L.A. Story, where she basically plays a human non-witch version of that character. Yeah. And Sarah Jessica Parker was hot in it. She's hot. Hot lady. I feel like that should have been her casting forever. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, but there it is. It's coming. I mean, it's not coming this Halloween, but it's no. coming. But we'll get it by next Halloween for sure. And yeah. that's exciting. I would estimate probably, uh, I would guess a Halloween-ish release. Yeah. An early October release next year. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's show. That is where we will leave you for today. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for getting up. And starting your day with us, we do the show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so we hope you will come back and join us on Wednesday. Friday, of course, is our very last costume Friday of the month. We're going big. We are. We're celebrating spooky season, so every Friday we are doing the show in costumes, in theme. It's been a lot of fun. So follow the channel so that you get uh, notified to come back and watch when the show is live. Dagger has a costume for Friday. 
all f- you all don't want to miss that producer dagger has yeah. has a has a has a costume for friday it's going to be a big deal uh folks as we mentioned in the beginning of this whole ding dang thing we're in a shed sure are this channel is completely independent just getting by and doing our best surviving on sugar breakfast so we wanted to go through as we do at the end of every episode and thank the people who have directly supported the show in some way during this broadcast so i want to give a shout out to flow fighter one for the follow sofa so sofa m so fames thank you uh ice cream blue pirate uh, Emmanuel12255, Geese2049, Lunar Princely, J Little85, The Immortal Boff, Kamikaze Squirrel55, thank you all for the follows. Rababa, thank you for the resub for 13 months. Calling out that new camera so pretty. Thank you, Rababa, and thank you for being here for 13 months and helping us as we uh, as we just Keep this shed looking better and better. Uh, Brightside, thank you for the follow. Sammy Sunshine, Roughneck Two Niner, uh, L Goron Twelve, thank you for the follow. Fifty Four Aqua Snakes with the five hundred bits. Happy Saint Crispin's Day and a happy Saint Swiven's Day to you. Uh, Will Mass with the subscribe with the subscription, brand new subscription. Welcome, Will Mass. You're trapped here now. Revolver Ocelot with the resub for five months. Thanks for sticking it out with us. Uh, you're all so wonderful. And remember, you know, maybe you already follow. Maybe you already sub. Maybe you've already donated. Maybe you don't want to sub or donate. That's okay. That's all fine. We love it that you're here. We make a show so people will watch it. And so you are already doing everything we could have imagined. But if you want to help out a little bit more, there are easy ways to do so. It's true. I mean, just, retre- just retweet when we go live. Mm-hmm. You know, share a link. If you know somebody who would like the show, maybe share a clip. Or uh, share the VOD from YouTube. We put them here and we put them on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody that you know is not into Twitch, but they're a YouTube person. We don't uh, yuck anybody's yum here. We're on YouTube. Let them know. Send a link. Uh, also, you can join the Discord. It's free. It's free. You can just do that. You, you can literally out. just do it. You can just do it and hang out and chat with people all the time. And it's just cool BBs, cool little pickles like you all the way down. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And you know... Sometimes we're not here, and we want you to know that even though we're not here, we're still here for you spiritually mm-hmm. and emotionally. Yeah. When there's one set of footprints in the sand, uh, it's just you because we don't like the beach. Mm-hmm. But we would be there with you if we didn't hate the beach. But yeah. also, when we're not here, we're in other places. Where? Where would that be for you, Anthony? For me? Oh, uh... <sighs> Well, you can find me everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch, where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. Uh, last week, I made an appearance on Kind of Funny's Spider Man in Review. We're watching every Spider Man movie up to uh, the release of No Way Home. And I will be back again this week for Spider Man 2. So look out for that and watch the old one if you haven't yet. Uh, you can also catch my science comedy podcast with Jeff Kanata. It's called We Have Concerns. That's every Friday at wehaveconcerns.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it for right now. Sage, what about you? What are you doing? Oh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream over on my channel on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Uh, you, oh, this Saturday, we are doing a, a little bit of a marathon stream. We're doing six hours of spooky games. Ooh. Six hours spooky on Saturday. Today, which is Monday, you can find me on the Smosh Games channel, of course, every week for Board AF. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think, so come and join us for that. We are doing um, part two of our Hunt a Killer game, Ooh. diving into a little more mystery solving. I think that'll be a very good time. Uh, you can find me on the D&D channel. You can find me all around. I'm, I'm... Whisper, whisper into the wind, and there she will be. We've got new stuff coming up on this channel, so keep an eye out for that. Patrons will get to hear about it first. You got your bonus clip on Friday. What did we talk about? What about Epcot? We talked about Epcot Center. We literally just talked about the original plans for Epcot. I love Epcot Center. You can catch that and a bonus clip every week over on the Patreon. And it's it's so it's so cheap. It's oh, yeah. so cheap. Five goes, bucks a month? Please. You get so much for five bucks so a much. month. It's like so much. Uh, I wish I had watched Malignant sooner. So oh, we could have discussed Malignant on the Patreon. We can still discuss Malignant. Because I finally watched Malignant. And boy, do I have feelings about it. Oh, boy. Did it give you a splitting headache? Yeah. Ah! Hey, everybody.
everyone. Thanks Have for a great joining day. us. Bye. <laughs>